Hi, greetings. So, cheers. Some late afternoon coffee. Mostly decaf, thankfully. This is my second attempt, of course, at this quicker kind of studio vlog thing. I've been working on this painting constantly at this point, so it's um, it's trickier because you don't have as much uh, in between time to kind of reflect on it and go away from it for a few days and then come back to it. I always find the first instinct is the most important, so after you've been working on it for a really long time, that's kind of the worst time to make decisions. And the, But that's kind of where I'm at because it's on a deadline and I have to finish it as soon as possible, so I thought I would sneak in this little vlog episode to cover something I haven't done yet, which is my thoughts on our, our final critiques and adjustments. So at this stage, it's still, to me, it's still a, a ways away from being finished, or what I would feel is finished, even though like 99.9% .9 of the surface is covered with what I would consider the, the final color layer, and for me that's also a layer that includes, uh, where is it, I've got some here, uh, stand oil in the paint mix. The reason I use stand oil is because it retains a gloss if the paint is applied thick enough, just thick enough, um, and then that gives it a, a, a feeling of the what it looks like it would be when it's varnished uh, without relying on varnish, and that also keeps the dark areas dark, and that is massive to me. There are other mediums that do that, of course. I've spoken about that in live streams and things. Uh, there's there's alkyd mediums uh, like the uh, what's it called, Windsor Newton. Um, uh, what, anyways, I'm going to just stop while I'm ahead. Uh, so, there's there's a ton of things that I feel could be improved and changed. Uh, and it's kind of a perfectionism thing to the infinite degree, which is where I feel that I like, I'd like to go within, within reason. Um, I, I don't believe that there is a such thing as a, as a bad type of perfectionism until we actually affect negatively affect our physical health, um, but within reason, if we can try to achieve everything that we're going for, then I'd say we should do it. Um, for me, this part of the process is also a point where I begin to um, take me back to my teen years where I would write in my little journal essays about how I despise mediocrity. I, I really despise the, the feeling of good enough um, because, you know, for me this is, this is my whole life is, is this. I try not to take myself too seriously, but I take my work very seriously. So I, I don't want to put anything out into the world that I, that I can't stand by. And so even the last video where the flesh areas were totally not finished, that, that's difficult for me because I know that people are always going to look at it. Um, you know, back in high school, somebody would see something I was drawing, drawing a person, and you start with one part, and then they're like, hey, how come that guy doesn't have any arms? You know, and I'm... <laughs> Uh, I just, you know, it's, it goes without saying, it's, there's always going to be somebody that thinks something isn't right and they maybe don't question it, so whatever, that's their problem. But there's, there's a ton of things compositionally that can still be corrected and that's what I will zoom into now and try to speak about. Here we are. What do I hate about it? Um, <laughs> So I think that painters can learn a great deal from photographers. If you don't have Photoshop or an equivalent program, I use one called Affinity, A-F-F-I-N-I-T-Y. Um, I would highly recommend it. I would recommend learning as much as you can about what photographers know about lighting, white balance, color temperature, um, all that stuff. They, they learn from painters. A lot of photographers learn from looking at people like Rembrandt and all that kind of stuff. You know, they use the same terms. And I think painters should also learn about everything that photographers know now at this point. So, for example, um, when I look at my initial reference image, I don't see as much of a discrepancy between the flesh, the overall feeling of the flesh color, and the, the uh, garment. I see a little bit more red in the garment. Uh, maybe not, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, if, if not, maybe I have a little bit more orange in the flesh. But I think once I come back now, and I... I can make some changes now. This part's dry, this part is still a little bit wet, so if I want to work into it, especially the light areas with titanium white or anything close to titanium, I can come in and adjust those areas pretty easily still, and I will be doing some of that today. Uh, so I want to bring a little bit more uh, reds into this area to kind of match this. So remember, with composition, 
uh, we're always using color as a, as a balancer that goes throughout the entire thing. So our warms and our cools, uh, pr especially our primaries and then maybe some secondaries about thinking how they link together to make the eye unify through color throughout the entire composition. Um, I'm a big fan of tonalist paintings from the roughly 100 years ago that uh, were really focused on mood. A lot of them had limited value. They were they were often like uh, missing the brightest brights, or you know sometimes even the darkest darks. And they were they were kind of heightened in mood by focusing more on a kind of a monochromatic feeling. Uh, so that's what I do have here. The one thing about tonalism is that, like I said, they, there was fewer values in it. So it, it's not as possible for something to pop when there's fewer values. Your deepest, darkest shadows and your brightest highlights aren't, aren't ex as exaggerated as they can be in, in images that seem really three-dimensional. So I'm kind of always at a, at a difficult place between tonalism and, and more contemporary uh, pop kind of art that has a, a, a great feeling of three dimension to it. Uh, but that's okay, I think those contradictions are a good thing. Um, so I will be adding a bit more red in the garment uh, ever so slightly as I go around. There's still some highlight areas where I can improve what I was talking about with the last video with the circular tiny little patterns. I should do another close up to show some of the things that I've been thinking about with the flesh. I could come back into this area and also add a tiny bit of red that would also unify with the flesh areas. I've got a brighten this up. I had a tough time doing that at first. It's part of a layer thing. I don't want to uh, use extremely thick passages of paint sometimes, so I'd, I'd rather wait till it dries. Uh, another major thing is this little area right here uh, is uh, a correction that I made, so I'll just have to make this little spot the same color as this, and it's actually still wet. If I touch it right now, this little part beside the hair is still wet. Um, something with the elbows bothering me. Uh, this, some of these areas here were actually not finished when I, when I was working them wet and wet just because I ran out of energy. I mean it was like late and I just went as far as I possibly could and I knew that if I needed to come back I could. Um, the thing about working of course, reworking areas in the darks, which I hopefully don't have to do too much of here, is that it can sometimes be really tricky to apply new paint over top of the dry, dark areas, and so that's when you'd have to oil out. Basically all you do is take uh, regular linseed oil, can be any type, here's some right here. Uh, what I do is I put a very small amount on a perfectly clean brush, so pretend this one is super clean, and then I actually, I like to use a brush instead of a cloth. I find that any cloth is not actually lint-free, even if it says lint-free, um, and I like to work in, so say example I had a problem with this area, I can put a little bit, just one drop, the smallest amount of linseed oil on that and work it only across the area that I'm going to be working on, as thin as possible. If the area is a little bit glossy, you will find that you have to um, keep working it and that's just, you know, then it will eventually adhere. Kind of got a circular motif going on here. I like to, because compositionally I like to think of very simple shapes. Going back to like the top five or six compositional things that we can do, circles, uh, simple one-third linear division, uh, S pattern, uh, what's the other one, uh, L shape, or reverse L shape in some way, or a combination of those. So this is basically a, a circle, and um, so the, a lot of the areas were kind of planned to be this way, so like the lights on the garment fit within the circle, uh, the highlight on the head and the hat kind of fits within the circle. Uh, what's bothering me right now is that the frame is, it could not, this is something I couldn't tell at first, but the frame is um, pretty dark in this area, so the only thing I can really do is repaint it, which I really don't want to do. It is dry, I believe, if I touch it, yeah, it's dry, um, but I can continue to soften it a little bit more, so that's something I might do, same with this part of the saw handle. Um, you can probably see a little closer right now the area that I corrected with the hair. Uh, I kind of at a stage in, in my painting game where I feel like nothing can be soft enough in some ways, even though I want to have a lot of details, so there's a contradiction there. The more detail that you have, the harder things are. Um, and as soon as you blend things and, and continue to soften them, uh, it takes away some of the, the brightest brights and the darkest darks, right, of course. So 
uh, there's another little weird contradiction. I might try to soften up a few of these lines along the edges a little bit more, but everything should serve the focal point. So while I'm looking at, I would say, her left eye is probably the focal point of the whole piece, I am thinking of how everything else serves that. That's all that really matters. Um, there are a couple other areas that could be like focal points that I could stare at and, and sort of subconsciously or through the side of my eye peripherally look at how it would affect that as well. But for the most part, I want to focus on this area. And when I do focus on that area, I'm, I'm seeing this. That, that's something that I notice and it distracts me. Um, but things that are a certain distance away, like the hands, uh, they don't distract me. I think the hands are actually far enough that once I put the, the brighter lights into the lace, it's, it's not going to distract me. And uh, conveniently, I'm actually not sure if I can see this yet. I probably have to move the angle a little bit. Whoops. So conveniently, um, the lace is far enough away from the hand, but it also has a diagonal shape, which is, which is really good. To me, this kind of has a diagonal. If it's even brighter, it's going to lead to the face a little bit more. All of those things, we, there's a lot of diagonals here, of course, so that was all planned, right? Like, it's, it's really nice to have um, diagonal patterns, especially within the square. It just provides that movement, right? Movement is always something like this. If, if an object is perfectly straight up and down, like a paintbrush like this, it, it symbolizes rigidity and stillness, like columns or pillars. Think of all the, the Greek buildings, right? That's pillars. There's this feeling of stable... Um, sort of permanence. Uh, as soon as something is like this, it's it throws it off kilter, of course, right? And it feels like it, it automatically symbolizes that there's potential movement there. That if, if, if a building looks like this, we always think it's going to fall, right? And the only one that didn't is like the Tower of Pisa, of course. So it's like most things, when they're like that, we have a feeling that there's movement implied. Um, and that's part of it. So the circular motif, of course, is part of that. It's something I've used, I've overused a million times. Um, but um, even this, the shape of the saw, uh, the shape of some of the stuff in the back. So this is kind of what I was talking about. Um, I don't have a problem with the face in terms of the overall um, color balance, especially in the reds that I was concerned about. When I'm looking at it in a sort of isolated way, the way that it's framed here, because I'm not seeing the rest of the composition. But we always have to remember that things have to work together in the whole composition. So when I zoom out, it feels to me like the amount of reds in the rest of the image don't quite match the right side of the face. So that's what I'm going to be correcting. So now the thing is, there's, there's two choices. We always have to remember there's either you correct one thing or you correct the other thing. Sometimes when one thing is too colorful, I could, for example, take the color out of the face, which I don't really want to do, or I could add more color to the rest of it. Same thing with value. If something is too dark or too light, like little wrinkles in skin and things like that, it, oftentimes we can, you know, say, oh, i got to make this part darker. It's not dark enough. But it actually, maybe it is dark enough, but instead making the area around it lighter could also do the same thing, and in many way, many times that's the case, actually. There's always kind of an illusion. Uh, the one other thing I'll point out from my last video was talking about, like, the circular patterns and things. Um, th something like freckles, I always really love the opportunity to put something like freckles on skin, because it gives us a clue as to what direction the surface is in. And uh, so, for example, there's a couple freckles on the cheek, really minor, uh, but they're, you know, they're turned. It's like a turned circle, right? Um, so that's always really important to, to keep those things in mind. There's probably 67 other things that I could say that I would have missed. Um, but that's it. Thanks for the comments on the last video about this format. That's the reason I'm doing this. And uh, check out the final high resolution image of this when it's finished to compare what I'm saying in this video to what will be a much better quality version of the colors and everything with the detail shots in that. So hopefully by the time you watch this, that's that's up. If not, it will be in another week or two, something like that, probably, hopefully. Anyways, thank you!